Hey, this is Bill Quain, and welcome to a really important part of this program here. This is all about budgeting. Now, most people really don't know how to budget because they don't know about the concept of budgeting. Because when we think about budgeting, we think about, oh, trying to live on a budget where we're trying to cut back and, you know, make, make stretch things and that sort of thing. And, and that's, that is budgeting, but when you when you're when you're budgeting for a charitable event it's really much more like a business budget and it's a great tool matter of fact as you'll see from this slide here a budget is a plan now we have a nice uh write up on this budget thing for you it gives a great example we're going to be talking about the example in this listen you may have to go through this thing a couple of times but once you learn how to do this, it is really simple. It's very straightforward. And I know you're going to do well here because you're a bright group of people. You're in a good cause here. And what we're trying to do, you're trying to raise money from a chat for a charitable organization. You're trying to do it through an event. We're going to help help you learn how to budget so that you do it this quickly and everybody in your committee will know exactly what's going on. So here's what a budget is. A budget is a plan. You want to do a budget prior to your event, and what you're going to do is you're going to predict your income and outgo, your ex your income and your expenses, and you're going to keep track of all the things that you do. And after the event is over, you're going to compare what you predicted would happen to uh, what actually happened, and that's going to give you uh, a, a, what's a thing called a variance. This is a very useful tool. It's a great way to get your committee right on track make some wonderful strides here. So let's get right into this with our next slide. Now there are five simple steps you're going to follow in order to do a budget. Number one, you have to set your financial goals. You're going to have other goals other than financial goals for, uh, for your event, but you want to specifically set your financial goals before you do your budget. Then what you're going to do, and this is a great exercise for your committee, uh, you're going to make a list of all the line items. Now, a line item is either an expense or an income item. So every every financial transaction you have, uh, for example, suppose you're you're going to have uh, you're going to sell uh, tickets to an event. That's a line item for income. Uh, but let's say it's a, a, you're you're doing a gala, so you're you're going to sell tickets to the event, but each person is going to get a full meal, whatever. Well, that's going to be an expense item. That's another, that's an expense line item. So you're going to make a list of all the things that are going to be either incomes or outgo on your budget. And those are called your line items. And oh, once you get those done, now you might have to add some later on because you forgot them. But gosh, after the first year, when you have them done, what a planning document you have. All right, step number three you're going to forecast. Now, forecast means to predict. You're going to predict how much each of your line items is going to be. So if you're predicting, for example, you're going to sell 100 tickets uh, at $50 a ticket, you're going to predict that your ticket sales, your income for ticket sales at line item will be $5,000, which is $50 times 100. Uh, the third thing you're going to do is you're going to you're going to track everything. You're going to you know, you're going to calculate all the totals for all the line items, and and the number of, and it'll complete your budget. Number four, then or number excuse me, number five, you're going to evaluate your budget to to see how you did. Did you you know did you did you do what you predicted you were going to do, or was there less income and more expenses? Was was there a, a one line item that was way out of line? Hey, that sounds kind of funny, doesn't it? But anyway, what a great tool this is for you. Now, another way to say this is that a budget is a forecast, it's an accounting, and it's a recap. So try to remember those three things. I mean, this is pretty simple. You're going to forecast, you're going to predict what you think will happen. Oh, this makes people really nervous, by the way. <laughs> but you have to get good at this because uh, it's really imperative that you, that you learn to do this. Uh, the second thing is going to be an accounting. You're going to keep a track. You're going to write everything down. <clears throat> if you get money in, you write it down. If you get take send money out, you write it down. It's just you're going to do your regular accounting like you would do with a checkbook. 
at home. And then the third thing is a recap. You're going to talk about uh, exactly what happened, how well you did in terms of your forecast. Now, once you do an event, once you have your event for the first year, uh, it gets it, it, it gets much easier to do a budget for the second year. It's it's oftentimes very difficult to predict, you know, how many attendees you're going to have, for example, and and also it's sometimes you you don't rem, you don't think of all the expenses that are going to come up, and you you learn these things as you go along. So first year is tough. After that, it gets much easier. But here's the thing: I don't want you to think of being wrong, like. In other words, if you if you predict you're going to have 200 attendees and you only have 150, don't think of yourself as being wrong. Think of the fact that your, your forecast was off, and for the next year, then you're going to you're going to make some adjustments. You know, don't don't make this a a right and wrong thing because you know, listen, if when you go through school, you're either right or wrong. But this is the real world, and you're doing great work here. Uh, you know, to raise money for a charity that's important to you. So just get better at it. This is going to be great for you. Now, in, in trying to figure out what kind of income you're going to have and what kind of expenses you're going to have, this is going to vary greatly depending on what kind of event you have. Now, the event we're going to show you, the example event we're going to show you in this particular part here is going to be a, a, a beef and beer dinner that this woman, Patricia, wants to run. Now, when when you see the case study from Cupid's Cranium that the, that Janine Norris is going to do for you, she's going to give you a, a real a real one of these. This is a this is just an example we made up. So some of the kinds of income that Patricia is going to have for this beef and beer we're talking about, uh, you're going to have dinner ticket sales, you're going to have uh, sponsorships, uh, maybe silent auction revenues. Uh, and you'll see a thing there called in-kind uh, sponsorships or in-kind donations. Uh, those are things like, uh, for example, suppose you have a, a, a somebody who they don't give you money, but they donate their services to you or they donate some product to you. Um, we're going to show you an example of how a DJ uh, who's who's worth $150 uh, for the job he's going to do, uh, donates his services. So that's an in-kind donation. And then the expenses, again, these will change depending upon what you do. We're going to show you in, in this example uh, we're doing here. Uh, Janine has a whole lot more in, in the Cupid's Cranium uh, case study she's going to show you, but yeah, you might have centerpieces. you got the food and beverage costs. You might have advertising and so forth. Oh, by the way, I have advertising uh, listed as an, as an income as well uh, up there. You see how advertising is listed as both an expense and an income? Uh, the reason is because you can sell advertising space uh, on your, uh, let, let's say, your agenda that you publish for the dinner or you know, the race agenda, whatever. So you can sell advertising space, but you might also have to pay for advertising in order to get your attendees or your sponsors. All right, now, <clears throat> I want you to pay particular attention to this, okay? What, I don't know what you're doing right now. Maybe you're uh, ironing the cat or microwaving the turtles. Whatever you're doing, <clears throat> stop for a second and pay attention to this. This is really important. Whenever you have a sponsored item, uh, for example, in the example we're about to show you, the, and I just talked about this, <coughs> excuse me, the DJ is going to donate his services worth $150. I want you to list them as both an expense and as an income. Now, you're probably saying to yourself, Bill, what are you doing to me here? You're making me do more work. Why should I have to list these sponsored items as both an expense and an income? Why don't I just not list them? Because they're not costing me anything, and I'm not really getting income. <clears throat> Here's exactly why. Suppose next year, I mean, I think this is a one-time event that Patricia's doing, but since she's been successful, she might uh, might you know do it next year too. And make it a permanent thing. But most of you are going to be doing things year by year. If if you don't list, let's just take this DJ thing, for example. Suppose Patricia did not list the DJ as a $150 expense and then listed separately as a $150 revenue when the DJ donated his services. <clears throat> Suppose next year uh, you don't get the DJ to don donate his services. And that this is just for a small item. But now all of a sudden, 
you're missing an item from your budget because you didn't list it because it was, you know, you, you thought, well, I'm not really, it's not really cost me anything, so why list it? <clears throat> and, and so now all of a sudden, but suppose this was a bigger item. Suppose this was a $5,000 item. So suppose the following year, a $5,000 expense is showing up um, and, and that, that wasn't even listed last year. You know, I'm saying, so that's that's why we listed it as an because, because it's a line item. It is a legitimate line item. And every line item, every transaction that takes place should be its own line item. All right, now let's let's talk about this little example we're going to give you here as we do a budget for this event. Uh, a woman named Patricia. She uh, there's a fire in her neighborhood. It destroys three homes, and there's families there with children and that kind of stuff. And Patricia is good friends with one of the families, and so she's going to run a fundraiser. Uh, it's called a beef and beer. Now, beef and beer is like you know slices of roast beef and or maybe roast beef sandwiches and pitchers of beer. You know, I live in Philadelphia. Maybe they don't do this anymore. They used to do them all the time when I was younger uh, as a fundraiser type thing. And and, and her goal is to raise $3,000 because she wants to help buy school supplies and clothing for the children of these three families. You know, now this is something that if it goes really well, maybe Patricia makes this a, a an annual thing and, and raises money to, to give to victims of fires or, you know, disasters or whatever and and each year her committee and she award this money out to people but this she's doing this right now for this one event and we're going to show you how the budget she does for this remember she has a but she has a goal of three thousand dollars in revenue so now here look here's a budget uh for this event now remember she's hoping to patricia's hoping to generate three thousand dollars net revenue net income i should say uh from this event so she's going to, have to generate a lot more than three thousand dollars because she has expenses. So this is going to give Patricia a chance to test her goals, because as you start to do these calculations, you you might realize that her goals are too ambitious, or you know maybe she could do a lot better. So this is another great thing to use your budget for. Now I know this is a little bit small here, but uh, you know so if you're looking on at this on your phone, <laughs> you might might have looked on a laptop instead. But uh, so let's look at this now. I want to go down this item by item so we can we can see some of these things. Uh, the first thing is we're going to have ticket sales. Now, she's planning on uh, selling 120 tickets. In other words, she expects 120 people to come to this. She's predicting 120 people will come to this beef and beer, and she's going to charge $25 a person. So she's predicting $3,000 in ticket sale. All right, now let's look at this second section of incomes here. These are sponsored items and sponsorships that uh, Patricia hopes to get. Now, she's going to try to get sponsors to donate either in kind, which means they're trading out their services, or money for a product. I mean, they could just you know say, oh, I'll buy the whatever type thing. And so we have a group of them here, and, and their, their total is going to be $970. Now, remember, this is she's predicting this. So this, is, this hasn't actually happened. In other words, she hasn't already gone out and gotten these sponsorships. She's targeting these things. Now, can you understand how important this is? Because as you set this up, now you're, you and your committee are targeting items that you want to get donated. This is really terrific because this gives you, you know, this gives you like a to-do list here. So that's going to be the total of $970. For example, she, she's hoping to get um, uh, $600 worth of beer donated. She, she figures her beer expenses are going to be $600. And I'll show you in a second how she's in, in the next slide, how she's calculating that. But she figures her beer expenses are going to be $600. Well, maybe she gets a beer company to donate the beer. Uh, maybe she gets a beverage distributor to donate, or maybe she gets someone to come along and say, hey, you know what, I'll donate the beer for this. Now, obviously, if someone's donating the beer, that raises some liability issues, that kind of stuff. So it, you know, you might be, you, you might want to look into that where, you, you know, if somebody sponsors you for $600, you don't necessarily say this is for the beer um, because of that kind of stuff. But the same thing with this, I mean, with the centerpieces, very few people are injured by centerpieces. So that would be a less controversial thing. So that you're, to you're hoping to get a total of $970 donated here. 
for these specifically for these items and um, that will reduce your expenses because, but you'll, you'll still have the same expenses listed but you're going to make more money because those are being covered uh, by somebody else rather than from ticket sales now let's look at another income item here uh, they're going to run a silent auction by the way this is called on-site revenue or uh, e uh, at the event revenue um, or at the event fundraiser or on-site fundraising when you have these people there they're already in a giving mood so you want to make sure that you have some ways for them to to, to give there that may be a 50 50 raffle could be all kinds of things Patricia's planning on doing a silent auction here and uh, but she doesn't know what items they're going to get yet and she doesn't know how many they're going to get and she doesn't know what the average bid will be but so she's making an estimate here so she says we, we want to have um, uh, 20 items and a $25 average bid on those items so now again here's a target now the whoever's in charge of the, getting the silent auctions they've got to go out there and find items that are going to give you uh, that kind of range now listen, maybe they have some items that are only going to go for fifteen dollars. So in which case, you got to have some items that are going to go for forty dollars. You know, to uh, to to give you the average there that you want. They're hoping to raise five hundred dollars uh, from uh, their silent auction. What's the total prediction here for income? Patricia is planning. Uh, but she looked at this. She looked at this realistically, and she said, "Okay, listen, I I think we can sell one hundred and twenty tickets, and you know, here's." probably what we can sell those tickets for because, you know, there's an upper limit on what you can charge people for a beef and beer. Uh, she's saying, okay, listen, um, we, we can get some sponsorships here, we think, for the cover of these items. And whether it's to cover those items specifically or just ask them to donate money and it'll, you know, you want to pay for those, however you want to do that. She's saying we're doing a silent auction. We want to have this much money. And so you're going to come out with, you know, about 4400 and seventy dollars here. Uh, that's her prediction. That's what she's aiming for. She and she feels that that's achievable. Well, remember, for your for your for your goals, you want your goals to be timely, measurable, and attainable. Hey, is this goal timely, measurable, and attainable? Yes, it is. Timely, it's going to be you know f at the time of the event. Uh, uh, measurable, yes, you know the, it's got a certain dollar amount there. Is it attainable? Well, you know what? We're going to look at that and see if it is right now. Um, uh, Patricia thinks it is, but you know what? Let's see if that's going to give her her goal of raising three thousand dollars. Now let's go to the expenses here. Uh, the restaurant they're expecting to do two th have t an expense there of two thousand four hundred dollars. Now that includes both the food and beverage. So the 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 beer is in there as well. Remember, I said if you're gonna if you're gonna look for a sponsorship of, of specific items, uh, you want to list them as both an expense and an, an income. Uh, so two thousand four hundred dollars, and that I'm going to show you in the next slide how that was calculated because that's important as you start looking at these sort of aggregate things that have uh, different amounts to them. Now they're also predicting a hundred and fifty dollar expense for the DJ. They figure that's what it's going to cost to have a DJ there at the event. And a hundred dollars for AV setup. Now, this be, might be microphones. Maybe you've got a a video playing. You know, uh, whatever it happens to be. You know, sometimes restaurants charge you extra for that. Sometimes you can get them to uh, to throw it in. But it, you know, th these are going to have expenses to them because these are real things that you usually have to pay for. All right. Now, here's an expense item. <clears throat> They're going to mail out invitations. Now, maybe for your event, you're doing social media rather than uh, you know, mailing stuff, but it, in this case, they're going to mail out, they're going to mail out 300 invitations to people. It, you know, they're going to have to print them up. They're going to get stamps for them. They're going to mail them out. Now, th this, this is not counting volunteer time. This is the hard cost for that. So they're thinking 50 cents each for the, each of these invitations. And so there's $150 for the 300 uh, invitations they're going to mail out. Now, here's two kinds of like stationary types of uh, expenses they're going to have. They're, they're going to have forms for the silent auction. And by the way, when you do a silent auction, a lot of times it's good to have a a, a triplicate form, you know, a carbonless triplicate form, so um, you can keep track of this stuff. And uh, they're also going to have expenses um, uh, for tickets. They figure, you know, they, they got to buy tickets to 
so you, you know they tear the you 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 sell the tickets for, to people and they tear them in half and you keep one and they throw up a drawing or something like that. Now the centerpieces, um, Patricia likes to have centerpieces there, and I think that's a nice touch. Uh, they they um, uh, they're going to have ten tables and. And uh, figure twelve dollars each for the uh, centerpieces. That's one hundred and twenty dollars for the centerpieces. Now, advertising expenses. Uh, they want to get this into the paper and uh, on the radio to try to get people to come to this thing. But it, it's going to be kind of expensive to do that. Six hundred dollars. See, it, it, I'll show, I'm going to show you later on how maybe that's become as an expense area you target, because if you can get rid of those by using social media instead. Uh, you know, that's going to save you 600 bucks right there. And that goes right to your bottom line. Now, that's going to give you a total expenses of $3,465. That's your outgo. So your income is money that comes in. Your outgo is your expenses. That's money that goes out. That's a fair amount of expenses there, especially considering uh, that the, the income that you have for this is not that great. Now I just I just noticed that when we converted this to PowerPoints to put this up here for you to see it, we we cut off the place where it shows you your uh, total income from this event. So we're doing a little pop up here for you, and uh, you'll see that uh, by the, when you subtract the expenses, the expected remember these are predicted your predicted expenses from your um, from your uh, total revenue total income on this. Uh, you're going to end up with $1,005. Now, that's your prediction. Now, remember that Patricia's original goal here was uh, $3,000. Folks, can you see the beauty of doing this this budget here? Because remember, we're trying to create budget items that are attainable, go, excuse me, goals that are attainable. Well, it doesn't look like $3,000 is going to be attainable. So what happens is, and I'm going to show you this a little bit later on, Patricia adjusts her budget, her her her, her, her goals down because she said, wait a second, I can't reach that. Now what she's going to do is she's going to go back through each of these items and she's going to say, where can I raise more money and where can I cut my expenses? All right, so that this is a very valuable thing there. So you can see there the pop-up, it says $1,005, nowhere near her hoped for and predicted goal. Now, when I was going over the budget on the last slide there, I promised I'd show you how this restaurant uh, costs are being calculated here. And this is really important because a couple couple interesting things in here. Uh, number one, so let's look at this. Uh, you're going to have uh, a, a, the, the restaurant is charging you $11 a person for the roast beef sandwiches. Uh, they're going to charge you uh, $5 a person for the for the pitchers of beer. That's pretty reasonable. I might go there tonight, actually. <clears throat> so that's going to give you a, a total cost of $16. But on top of that is going to be tax. In this case, in this state, it's uh, this jurisdiction, it's 6%. And then they're going to add an 18% gratuity on top of that. And the total you're going to get from that is $19.84. For the purposes of our budget, we're rounding it up to $20 just to make it easy. <clears throat> but I want to point out one thing here. When if you're dealing with a restaurant or a caterer or something like that, uh, make sure you're not paying the gratuity on top of the tax. In other words, don't don't get the the amount of the food and beverage, then get the tax, and then put a gratuity on the tax because that that's going to end up costing you extra money. The gratuity should be calculated separately, and and I did this in this calculations. So uh, that that 1984, that's with six percent calculated for the sales tax, and then 18 percent. But the 18 percent was was calculated on the 16 dollars, not on the 16 dollars plus the sales tax. Now, just to give you an example. <laughs> When I got married, uh, my mother-in-law negotiated with the caterer, and the caterer quoted her a price that was inclusive. So there's two there's two kinds of food and beverage pricing. One is plus plus, which is plus tax plus gratuity, and the other one is inclusive. So the price includes tax and gratuity. And the uh, the caterer at the end of the event. Uh, 
my in-laws have a have a place on the uh, 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 overlooking the beach and we had it there it was really a great wedding it was really terrific and uh so that it was on their property and the caterer came there under a big tent and that kind of stuff at the end of the event the caterer presented my mother-in-law with the bill and it was plus plus so in other words it was the amount she negotiated per person i forget how much that was plus tax plus gratuity and um and she said no no you you uh you agree to do it inclusive. And he said, no, no, we never do that. And she had a tape recorder, which she pulled out. And she said, I taped it when we were talking now to this day. And so he gave it to her by way, inclusive to, to this day. I don't know if my mother-in-law actually um, recorded it, but I, she has my undying respect for doing that. If it was a bluff, well-played mom. All right, now look, Patricia is disappointed. She looks at this and she says, wait a second, I'm not coming anywhere near my $3,000 goal. <clears throat> so we're going to see in, in a minute where Patricia actually reduces her goal based upon the reality of this budget. But but what she's also going to do is she's going to try to uh, – do the best she can now that she has a budget. And this is the beautiful thing about having a budget. But what you want to do now is you want to look and see where your uh, money can do you the most good. So in the slide previous to this, I showed you that the that the cost uh, for the restaurant, the food and the beverage, was going to be uh, $5 a person. I'm just going to be uh, $20 a person. And you know, that was the $19.84, and we, and we rounded it up. Uh, now the the ticket sales are twenty five dollars a person. So if you're selling the 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 beef and beer ticket for twenty five dollars and it's costing you twenty dollars, you see it shows here that you're it's it's only a five dollar net revenue net income from the sales of tickets because you got to pay the twenty dollars for the cost. Um, so let's suppose that uh, Patricia said, "Hey, I want to make more money, so let me increase my ticket sales." from 120 to 150, which is 30 more tickets. Well, that's going to be a lot of work to do that. And, you know, that might have even have some expenses uh, associated with it. But so if you even if you do that, even if you increase it by by 30 people, which I guess is a 25 percent increase, right? 30 divided by 120. And um, so the 25 percent increase in ticket sales, it's only going to increase your bottom line by 150 dollars because that's five hours a person times. 30 ticket, 30 additional ticket sales. That's 150 dollars. So you're going to do a lot of work just for 150 bucks. So you're, what you're going to do is you might say to yourself, you know what? Let's not put a lot of effort into trying to get any more ticket sales. Let's uh, put efforts into getting more revenue from someplace else, which could be from sponsorships or whatever. Or let's look at how can we can reduce our <clears throat> our cost. Do you remember back there? By the way, there was a 600 dollar. Um, uh, it, it predicted expense for for advertising and promotion. Well, listen. Suppose you got rid of that and did social media instead. So instead of trying to get more people to attend, you you the cost of acquiring attendees you reduce. That's six hundred bucks. Bam, right to your bottom line. So put your time where it will do you the most good. All right. Then let's look at the actual budget. Let's look at what actually happened at the event. Okay, so the event is over. Everything's been recorded. Here's what uh, Patricia did. Uh, now, first of all, I want to tell you that she reduced her um, her uh, goal from three thousand dollars to fifteen hundred dollars for this. Uh, you know, based upon her original um, uh, budget, she did. She thought, well, it's just not realistic, three thousand dollars. So let's let's adjust our budget, which she did. Now let's look at the ticket sales. So they. Predicted was going to be three thousand dollars in ticket sales. They had three thousand one hundred fifty dollars in ticket sales. You see that column there? It says variance. That's the so that's the difference between the two. It was one hundred fifty dollars. And there's a little note there explaining why. Uh, and they sold one hundred twenty six. So they sold six more uh, tickets at twenty five dollars each. That's the reason why they had one hundred fifty dollars more in ticket sales than they predicted. All right, so now let's look at uh, sponsorships, and we should, actually we should call this sponsorships and donations uh, line item here. The, look at the original one, nine hundred seventy dollars, and that was from the different things that were going to do the the beer, the DJ, the centerpieces, that kind of stuff. That they were hoping to get uh, in kind or uh, absolute cash value donated, <clears throat> but the actual was fourteen hundred and seventy dollars, which is a five hundred dollar increase. And you'll notice the note over there. And what the note does is it lists, okay, who picked up those sponsorships? Can you imagine how important this is for next year? 
when you, you, you want to go back to those same people and say, hey, we were so appreciative last year, but look what they got. They got an extra $500 from a local uh, hardware store, Fr Fritzy's Hardware Store. <laughs> and uh, uh, hey, good old Fritzy. Hey, hey, folks, go to Fritzy's next time you need something. He'll he'll help you out there. But um, uh, uh, that $500, now that could have been listed as a separate item as advertising because, see, Fritzy's name went on the tickets and the invitations, that kind of stuff. So, you know, you could have called that advertising, which would have been advertising revenue that you brought in. But in any case, so so be, because they were saying to themselves, listen, we're going to have to change this equation here. We see from our original budget that we're not making enough money. <clears throat> and so they targeted some areas. So somebody went out and target Fritzies and they said, hey, make a deal with you. Uh, give us 500 bucks. We'll put your name all over everything. So that's where that came from. You could treat that in a number of different ways, but that's a revenue and it's a $500 difference and it's explained in the note. All right, now look, in 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 the silent auction, again, we were able to increase our revenues here. Why? Because people had a tool to work from. I, I can't stress how important these budgets are because it just targets the work of your committee and really makes a difference. So they went out and, and they, they they got more items. And, and a lot of the items that they got apparently were – uh, services from private citizens who, you know, I will clean your garage or whatever. And, uh, and those are fun. I mean, because, you know, people are donating their, their time at your neighbors and, you know, it's just a great thing. I'll wash your car, something like that. This is a community effort. So this can be great. Listen, you can also go out and find other more expensive things that for people to donate, um, you know, uh, a yacht, for example, that's a lot maybe for a, a beef and beer dinner to, to get somebody to donate a yacht. But nonetheless, uh, you know, you, you use your imagination, target these things. It can make a huge difference in the good you can do from the money you raise. Now, look at the difference this fundraising made. Uh, 4470, uh, 5320, uh, it's $850 difference. Folks, that money is going right to the bottom line. You know, that this is just it, it's just fantastic a job they did. Again, they had a budget, they had goals, they had now they had target areas. It's powerful. Now let's look at your 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 restaurant charges here. Uh and again, I'm not gonna go into these too too deeply, but you you sold six more tickets, so that's you know, twenty dollars a person food and beverage cost there. That's hundred and twenty dollars more you had there. Now, listen, I, I'm i not going to go through this whole thing because you, you, you can go through this this whole printed out budget in, in your workbook there. But I, I want, I'm going to point out one thing here. See, let's look at the, the advertising. The, the predicted was going to be $600 in advertising. Remember, that was for the, 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 the radio spots and the newspaper ads, that kind of stuff. But but the the actual expenditures in advertising – was zero dollars. So look at that. That's a negative 650 variance. In other words, they they you you spent 650 dollars or less than you thought you would. Because remember, this is an expense here, so the negative is, is a money you didn't spend. Um, so uh, and what happened was is the committee said, hey, listen, why are we going to spend this money on advertising? Let's use social media. And so they save themselves six hundred dollars. So again, you see how this stuff's all recorded in here in your budget. And I did this in Word. I mean, you can do it in Excel. You can do it a whole bunch of different ways. But you know, just keep it simple for yourself so that you'll so that you will do it. So here's what happened. All right, in the actual event, the uh, uh, total revenue was five thousand three hundred and twenty dollars. The total expenses were $3,230. And look at this, the money available for the for the charity. So this is your, what would be net revenue in business is $2,090. So remember, now Patricia had changed her, uh, she had changed her goal from $3,000 to $1,500. That was based upon the reality that has hit due to the budget she, she'd put together. And she said, well, I, I can't, we can't do $3,000. There's no way uh, unless we completely change our model here. So she, and listen, $1,500 for those three families, that's going to go a long way. It's a great thing to do. 
and it's a great, great community spirit, you know, Fritzy's Hardware, all the people that got involved, that sort of thing. And 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 they're now they beat their they beat their new goal, so that it was fifteen hundred dollars. Now they're at two thousand ninety dollars. That's what they actually were able to give to those three families. And uh, hey, listen, if, folks, if you were going to do this as a sustainable type of thing, where you're doing it year to year, maybe you'd give away twelve hundred dollars that, and you'd you'd keep the other money, um, the eight hundred and ninety dollars, I guess that would be. Maybe you'd keep that for deposits for next year. You know, there's there's all kinds of things you can do with it. But this is this is money that you then raised from your charity event. But can you understand what a powerful tool budgeting is? I know this was a grind. I know we really put you through the ringer on this, but guess what? That's how you do budgeting. It gets easier and easier every year. What a great guide for your committee. You're going to love it. All right, so let's recap here and get you out of here, okay? So you can get out there and start raising money uh, for your charities. Budgeting is simple but powerful. Always make notes. Uh, re record uh, your complicated uh, transactions. Uh, always make notes. Uh, comp uh, record the difference between what you predicted would happen and what did happen and explain it. It's going to make so, so much easier next year. Have a line item for every transaction. Uh, this is just great stuff, and uh, I know you're going to uh, struggle with this at first, but believe me, once you do one budget, it's going to be great. Hey, get ready to watch Janine Norris's great case study from Cupid's Cranium.